Why is it that you and I haven't been able to beat Wall Street in the past? Well, it's pretty evident. It's just they got more data. They have access to all the data that is available on all the companies, whether it's historical, whether it's future. Goldman Sachs has 46,300 employees to manage their $2 trillion. So we can't beat them. But that's changed because we can beat them because of all the data that has been gathered in the past is now available to you and I. All we have to know is how to access it. And I figured that out for one element of it, earnings per share. And that's what I'm doing to help me manage the bus 12 and bus 13 uh, portfolios. I want to show you how I'm doing it because I want you to become a part of it. I want you to have access to it. I want you to join our tribe and I want you to support it so I can go out and hire the people away from Goldman Sachs and come to work for us. And when I say us, I mean the tribe. I'll show you exactly what I'm doing right now. This is how I beat Wall Street. I basically do the same thing they do. I analyze the data. Now, we've already discussed that the purpose of buying a company is to buy a company that is going to make money in the future, that they have a history of increasing their earnings and then sharing those earnings through either dividends or increased stock price with their owners. What I've done here is I've analyzed since 2009 to 2024 all the companies in the bus 12 and bus 13 portfolios to see, number one, what is their history on earnings per share. And here, as for Apple, I show their earnings per share from 2009 through 2023 and their projections for 24, 25, and 26. What I then do is measure the percentage of increase or decrease in that. That gives me a history of their ability to generate more profits year over year. Then what I do is I track their stock price. How much does it go up or down in a given year? year and how does their stock price relate to their earnings per share. When their earnings per share go up 43%, why is it that their stock price went down 5%? Probably had something to do with their projected earnings for 2016 going to be down 10%. The market knew it and took the price down the year before. So if we learn those things and we come to the future and Apple tells us what they expect their earnings to be in 2024, 25, and 26. And we see that over the average, that for every 26% that the earnings go up, the price of the stock goes up 35. Now I can predict what the price is going to be uh, in 2025 and 2026 and what percentage gain that is going to turn into. And then I can look at it and say, okay, based on the fact that Apple's price is going to go up 25.69% over the next two years, how many shares of it do I want in my portfolio? Well, that has to be relative to the other stocks that I have. Here's one down here that's going to give me an 824%. Here's another one who's projected to give me over 1,000%. And and then there's here's, here's one who's going to give me 10%. Well, if these numbers are accurate, then I can beat Wall Street because this is what Wall Street does. You can see that they build positions in stocks that are going to have future growth in their earnings. Let's use NVIDIA as an example. Again, go all the way back to 2009 and and go through what their history is in their earnings. And then you can see it. It some, some years they're up, some years they're down. Here they're up from 11 to 24 percent, but the stock is down uh, 11%. But if we look the next year, it's up tw- th- 34. If we come all the way across, we learn that for every 37% that the uh, earnings went up in the past 14 years, uh, the price of the stock went up 64%. That's an average. That's how the market 
rewards NVIDIA. So if I know, because NVIDIA told me that their earnings are going to be up 92% in 2025 and 22% in 2026, and they get a 72% bump above their earnings, then I know with some relative uh, element of, of fact that the price is going to go from today $885.81 to $2,289, and then the following year to $3,159 for a total gain in the next two years of 256.67%. Well, what if that isn't exactly right? Well, I'm okay with it. So it's only 248% or it's only 210%. I'm okay with that. And what I can do then is allocate my portfolio, how many shares I want in it relative to uh, their performance. Let me show you here. This is a sheet that I've created and it lists every ticker. And it tells me what the return is going to be over the next two years. And then I allocate, I say, I only want 0.3% of my portfolio in uh, NVIDIA, and that amounts to uh, 110 shares, but I own 160. So I need to get rid of, uh, what's that, 50 shares. And going down here, uh, Amazon, I want 3%. I want to hold 69, 70 shares, but I don't have any. So what I use is my cheat sheet to give me a price that I believe is going to, that Amazon will come down to. Right now it's at its all-time high. So I, I watch that. Let me show you. So this is my cheat sheet. And I come over here and look at Amazon and it tells me that its current price is $186. I determine that I think I want to buy it at $165, which is $21 lower than what it is, or 11.6%. Well, how do I determine that that's the price I want to buy Amazon at? I come over here to my chart on Amazon, and I uh, create what is called a Fibonacci retracement. This is its last support level down here. This is its new high. Fibonacci tells me that normally and historically that Amazon will retrace itself down to a 50% level. And there it is. There's my 166. Uh, We even had a gap here. It's since been filled, but this is where I want to buy Amazon. If I'm patient and if situations control or continue in the direction they're going. I see here that Amazon is overbought in its relative strength index. So I'm, and then I look at its uh, MACD and I see that it is coming to its MACD. It's going to cross. It'll probably come down and I'll probably be able to buy it somewhere in my 165 to 167 level. So that's how I use this, the tools that I have and that's how I beat Wall Street. I think the the, the key thing that I want you to focus on is this. This is a historical analysis that gives us then a future look and we take history and we interpret it to determine what the price of the stock will be in the future. This is exactly what Wall Street does. As I said, Goldman Sachs has 46,300 employees at their disposal to do this kind of work. Best of Us Investors has three employees. There's one guy who does this kind of work. That's me. But what I want to invite you to do is join our tribe, become a part of our tribe, and thus help me raise the money to go and hire analysts who can not only do it based on the earnings per share, but let's put some more lines in there that give us an equation relative to revenue growth, to free cash flow. Let's pull all this data together so that we can analyze it as a tribe of 10,000 members so that we can beat Wall Street. And why can we beat Wall Street? Because we don't have $2 trillion to invest that will move the market if we want to take a position in some small company that we've analyzed and found is going to have some tremendous growth. That's what this will do. That's what this will give you. 
I want to put this on your computer so all these cells fill automatically. And then also we have a bot who reads all of their earnings transcripts and tells us what in fact are the future numbers as well and what is the temperate of the company so we can do what Wall Street does. But because we're nimble, and we don't have $2 trillion, and we don't put, when we take a 2% position in a stock, we don't put $40 billion in it. So it takes us six months to build a position. No, we can do it like that. That's our advantage. I want you to have that advantage, and I want you to come join me by getting on the bus. If you got any questions, show up at our Stock Talk every Friday and we'll discuss this further because you need to be comfortable with it. You need to understand it and you need to know that there are smarter people than you and I behind it making it work. We're going to do exactly what Wall Street does, but we're going to do it at a fraction of the cost. We do not need 46,300 people working for us. I'm Kerry Grinkmeyer. I'm a retired financial advisor, and I want you to make better investment decisions.